Praise the Lord and good morning. We join New Beginnings Community Church. We ask you to join in and sing with us in the sanctuary. We don't own the rights to this music. Our pastor is Pastor William B. the singer. sanctuary. Thank God for all of his provisions and all that he has done for each and every one of us. Thank God for the salvation that he most of all for the sacrifice that he has made in his body to bring salvation unto us. This morning we have another lesson to the church speaking to the church this morning. One thing about the church, we must be getting ready to take, be caught out of here. We yeah. must be getting ready to be caught out of here. Because 
the word of God lets us know that judgment is coming on, 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 on the disobedient and the unfaithful and the wicked men on this earth. But just like just like Lot, the Lord sent the angels and told Lot, we got to get you out of here so the Lord can do what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lot was hesitating. And the angels had to grab him, grab him by the hand. Come on, we got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. God, we got to wake up. Mm -hmm. we, got to, we got to be ready to go. Got to move because the Lord gonna do what He got to do, mm -hmm. and so we got to be ready to go. So today we're dealing with uh, scriptures that is directly to the church, and it's to encourage you to, uh, you know, refocus, reprioritize, repent, because that is the charge to the church. Jesus told Luke and. And Jesus said it, and Luke wrote it in the 24th chapter of Luke in the 47th verse. Jesus quoted that repentance uh, and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name, in Jesus' name, beginning in Jerusalem. So this is what we preach in the church. This is what we get ready for. We have to repent, and we have to, we have to repent so we can have our sins remitted. Yes. Because... We have to be ready to go. So we're going to pray this morning real fast, and then we'll get into our blessing. Bow in the gracious hand of the Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. And you for mine to assemble together the study of your word. We thank you, Lord, for each and every promise that you have made unto us, Lord God. We thank you for the comfort of your spirit, Lord, that dwells in our hearts and minds. We pray that you will continue to be the Lord of our lives and lead us and guide us. We we'll praise you, glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you once again. Thank God for the beginning being present with us this morning. And you know the Lord said, where two or three would gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. So we most definitely have to give honor to the spirit of Christ in our midst this morning. Amen. In the book of Ephesians, first chapter, verse 13 and 14 is what we'll read. King James Virgin. Only follow what the translation that you use. We will have it on the screen if you are able to see it. But it will be the King James Version also. Ephesians 1, chapter 13 and 14. It says this, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. This is what we're dealing with this morning. And our thought this morning is until the redemption of the purchased possession. You and I have to realize uh, that we are the purchased possession. We are the purchased possession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why he is our Lord. This is why he is our Savior. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he purchased us with a price. Thirteenth verse says, in whom ye also trusted right. after that ye heard the word of truth. After that ye heard the word of truth. He said you trusted Mm -hmm. the gospel of your salvation the gospel of your salvation the good news the glad tidings the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ that is our salvation in whom also after that you believed after that you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit a promise. This is to the church mm -hmm. in Ephesus. This is to people that have already been born again. Mm -hmm. And this is why the statement reads as it does. After that, you had believed, you were sealed yes. with the Holy Spirit of promise. 
So those of us that believe that our salvation is secure in just the point of the fact of believing, you must understand and hear what the Spirit is saying today. After you believe, you must be sealed by the Holy Ghost. We take our time. We're not going to take all morning, but we take our time because the majority of uh, humanity declares their being saved simply bases on simply because they believe. Mm -hmm. But here, the Word of God is letting you know that after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. <coughs> so what we what we are trying to suggest to you this morning is that. After you believe God, in the, in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul ran into a disciple of John. And he asked the disciple, had he uh, received the Holy Ghost since he believed? And the disciple said that he had not so much as heard of the Holy Ghost. And so John asked him, well, how did you baptize? He said, I was in John's baptism. And he said, John barely, he did truly baptize unto repentance, but he said, believe on the him that was to come after, which is on Christ. He would baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So here we, we have to understand that after you believe, you have to be sealed with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Listen to what he said. This is the this is the end of 13. I will focus. In verse 14. But listen to the end of verse 13. He says, In whom also after that he believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. 14 says, Which is the earnest of our inheritance. Mm -hmm. Earnest in this text means deposit, down payment. Mm -hmm. After that, you were sealed with the Holy Ghost. It said, which is. The Holy Ghost is the deposit down payment. It said, of our inheritance. Mm -hmm. It said, until, until the redemption of the purchased possession. Amen. You and I were purchased by Jesus Christ. Let's yeah. get into the lesson. This is what we're dealing with. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. We are considered God's purchased possession by the seal of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So you are urged this morning that if you do not have the Holy Ghost, ask the Lord to give you the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So your salvation will be sealed, secured in him. Get into the lesson. Mm -hmm. And it's so important because most of us believe that our salvation is already sealed, but we, we stake our faith and our claim in the philosophy and tradition of religion or men. Mm -hmm. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be sad that they, when he say, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. The word that we're dealing with this morning is redemption. Redemption. He said the Holy Ghost, which is the earnest of our inheritance. The Holy Ghost is the down payment or the deposit of our inheritance. It says until the redemption of the purchased possession. Redemption is deliverance. The Holy Ghost is the down payment or the deposit until our deliverance right. until our total deliverance from this life mm -hmm. into eternal life. Mm -hmm. So if you and I don't have the Holy Ghost, we have we don't have that interest point into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, mm -hmm. but it's righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Redemption is also rescue, to be rescued. Mm -hmm. It's also to liberate. It all, it's, it's also ransom or to ransom. Mm -hmm. 
Redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. Okay. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is what redemption suggests. And also it says atoning for a fault or mistake. Yeah. Listen, redemption Redemption. If 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 you want the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Mm -hmm. Understand what redemption or redeem says. It's the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. That's it. This is what we are redeemed from. Sin, error, or evil. This is it. Without, without the the uh, the down payment or the deposit of the inheritance in the purchased possession, without the new birth, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will fail to be redeemed. You will fail to be redeemed because redeem is the action. A re redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. Mm -hmm. This is why Christ redeemed you and I from sin. Yes. Not from the other stuff <laughs> that <laughs> the false teachers are trying to lure you to sleep with. Redemption is for sin, error, or evil. So when you find yourself in error, you find yourself in sin, when you find yourself in evil, then you have to find repentance. Right. Amen. You have to find repentance because this is what the why we were redeemed. To, to get out of sin, to we were, we were redeemed to be delivered from sin, yes. to be rescued from sin, to be liberated from sin, to right. be ransomed from sin. Yes. Not all the other stuff that sounds good and it speaks to your intelligence or intellect. You are being lured to sleep by false teachers. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect to enter into the kingdom of God and you have sin. You have not been uh, redeemed from sin. Listen to the text. He said, depart from me. I never knew thee, ye workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. We quote the scriptures, we quote the scriptures, but we quote them without the understanding that we need. Uh -huh. They said, Lord, didn't we raise the dead in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? He said, depart from me. I never knew thee, ye workers of iniquity. You were never redeemed of your sins. You can do the work because you believe in the name. Right. But after you believe, the, Paul said, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit. A yes. promise. Yes. After you believe, you must be sealed with the Holy Ghost in order to, to receive the down payment or the deposit of the inheritance. Yes. And the down payment or the deposit guarantees that the Lord mm -hmm. is coming back for you or not. Mm -hmm. Get in the lesson. Mark 10th chapter, verse 45. It says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. I've always said it, and I'm probably going to always say it. Jesus came into this world to save us. Yes. He did not come into this world of used car salesmen. Mm -hmm. He did not come into this world of realtors. I said before, I'm probably going to always say it. Listen to the word of God. For even the Son of Man mm -hmm. came not to be served. He did not come to be served. All right. But <coughs> to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Born again.
men believers, members of the church, the body of Christ, our ministry is not to be served. Our ministry is to serve. Right. Hear what the Spirit is saying. He gave his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that in order for you and I to be Christians and have the necessary impact in this life we that we was ordained or anointed to have, we're going to have to give of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We cannot run and join everything smoking. Mm -hmm. That is not giving of yourself. Mm -hmm. That is joining in. Mm -hmm. Christ did not join in with the happenings of the life in this life. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, Christians think that we are saved and then we can run and join into everything going on. That's not giving of your life. And here he said he gave his for many. Okay. Our best Christ impersonation is still not going to convince everybody. Yeah. But if we don't have, but if we don't live a Christ-centered life, we're not going to impact anybody. And what we're doing, the Bible declared we're occupying until he returns. Right. But occupying don't mean that you you coming up with your own ingenuity and you got your own uh, devices and so forth. No. Right. He said he didn't come to be ministered to. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to be served. Yeah. It is the, it is not the spirit of Christ to have the arrogance to believe you should be served as a Christian. Mm -hmm. People should serve you. No. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of a servant. All right. it's, a, it's a humble spirit. It's the spirit that gives of itself mm -hmm. in order to redeem, we say, many. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Romans 3.24 It says being justified free by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. <laughs> being justified free by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. There is redemption in Christ. There is deliverance. There is liberty. Yeah. The Bible declared declare where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. There is uh, uh, rescue. Mm -hmm. He said redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin. This is what, what we're dealing with. He said we're being justified freely by his grace, mm -hmm. by God's love and unmerited favor. We were justified, but it was through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus yeah. is through the atoning uh, sacrificial death of Christ Jesus. It is through the deliverance because Jesus offered up his body mm -hmm. because he, he was crucified. He offered up his body and he died to propitiate the sins of the world. In your description, redemption is the action of being saved or saving from sin. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand what the church is all about. The church is not a social club. No. The church is not a network, a place to go network. Uh, the church is a place to be redeemed from sin and mm -hmm. error and evil. And all, all right. these things are uh, against God. They oppose God. So if we are if we are still without the redemption of sin, error, and evil, we are still enemy to God. We still oppose God. Mm -hmm. We're still hostile towards God, even in our believing. 
Because the because the demons believe. Yes. Scripture to say demons believe that there is one God. <laughs> demons believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. They believe in fear, but they'll never change because they'll never repent. Move on. Right. Romans 8, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. We have to understand uh, the significance of Jesus Christ. Yes. And we have to stop falling on the okie books, so to speak. The significance of Jesus Christ was to redeem us unto God. Mm -hmm. It was not to make us billionaires. It was not to make us high on the hog, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was to redeem us back to fellowship with God. It was to put us back in that place with God mm -hmm. where humanity failed in Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Simple, that's what redemption is simply about. It is not big eyes and little views. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord fashioning his body, making him a body. Mm -hmm. He has he has placed uh, members of the body as it pleased him. And we are to pray one for another. Mm -hmm. We are to, to he be helping one to another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we are all, not only are we all the purchased possession, but we are all waiting until the redemption of us. Mm -hmm. Until he come and take us out. Listen to what the word said. Uh, Romans 8.23, he said, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within yeah. ourselves, even us with the Holy Ghost. We are, we are groaning, oh. groaning in this body. Because why? He said, waiting for the adoption, waiting for him to make us eternal sons uh, to wit the redemption of our body till he deliver us from this body. Till he deliver us from this body, or he, till he deliver the body, the church, however you want to look at it. Right. But even those of us that are born again with, with the down payment of the Father, we should be groaning and moaning in ourselves, waiting to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's sad because some of us that are born again, we, we're not ready to go because we still want to obtain and, and acquire in this life, which is going to come to nothing. So what? why not work on your salvation, which has eternal gratification, but you're working on <laughs> working on uh, having a place in this life which the Bible said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and do his soul. Amen. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. Call yourself a believer. It's time not only to believe the word, but it's Amen. time to be sealed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because if you and I don't have that Holy Ghost seal, we are not going to be translated in Scripture said adoption. We're not going to be translated into the sons of God and we're not going to be redeemed. Hear what the Scripture said. Stop letting people tell you to turn around three times when the Cadillac is outside. <laughs> That's the enemy to your soul. Amen. Moving on. Stop letting people encourage you to go get this world education. And the Paul, Paul himself said that the, the world through wisdom know not God. Amen. So how in the world do we go into this worldly system and get their so-called wisdom and think we know God. Yeah. When God has hid it from the wise and the prudent, mm -hmm. he's hid it from them. Yeah. And he had to reveal it unto babes. Why babes? Because babes desire the necessary uh, milk of the word mm -hmm. so it can grow thereby. Babes don't tell you, I don't, don't feed me, I'm already grown. 
baby. <laughs> a baby. A baby don't push the bottle away and tell you, don't feed me, I'm already grown. That baby cried, 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 cried. And you desire and desire and desire with the sincere milk of the word until he is full. Yes. For an hour or two. And then he wants some more. Moving on. Mm -hmm. We we scripture says we've gotten uh we fallen into our own conceit, our own our own snares. We 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 have to stop being so intelligent, we think. In the presence of God. Right. That's foolishness to God. Jesus. Hmm. Uh, Galatians, but no. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. It says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now we gotta we gotta read this with with understanding. It says, but of him are ye in Christ, who of God is made unto us. Now, who did God make unto us? Christ. Wisdom, not Harvard. Righteousness, yes. not rules and regulations, not the law. Because if they, because if they had a scripture said if they had been the law that would say mm. there would not have been a need for the second, the second covenant. If that had been if that if the law would have saved them, then there would not have been a need for the new covenant. Mm. So the law was abolished. Right. In other words, you are not going to uh, declare righteousness by your work, by the righteousness of your work. Amen. Because that was about. Mm -hmm. Scripture is telling us he made Christ this unto us. Mm -hmm. Wisdom, righteousness, mm -hmm. sanctification. Woo! That's the big one. Mm -hmm. We struggle with sanctification. Why do we struggle with sanctification? Because of the very definition of sanctification. Sanctification is a being set apart unto God. Right. All right, come on. Jesus Christ was set apart unto God. He right. only did the things that he heard his father say. Right. We gotta wake up. He, sanctification is being set apart unto God. Sanctification is not trying to justify doing whatever it is you want to do and, and still have the nerve to say, well, I'm saved. Mm. I said it before. I'm probably going to say it again. You cannot worship God with your lips. Your confession does not do it. Jesus said, these people worship me with their lips. We declare our salvation with our lips. That is also the doctrine of religion, the doctrine of men, mm -hmm. the tradition of men. You cannot worship God with your lips. You can't do it. The Bible says you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. He said he's looking for such to worship him. And he said now is the time when the true worshiper will worship me, will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. You can't worship God in, <laughs> yeah, you can't worship God in your own righteousness. Mm -hmm. You have to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he has made Christ unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Mm -hmm. So you and I are would not make it without Christ. Right. Not gonna make it on our own ingenuity. It's not gonna work. Okay. God, the Bible teaches you and I that God is not a respecter of persons. No, he's not. God is not a respecter of persons. Just because I have a billion dollars doesn't mean 
he loves me more than the homeless. You got to wake up. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Christ was made a curse for us. So how in the world do you think you and I are going to make it without Christ? He said, I am the door. Yes. And he said, by me if any man enter in. I am the door. A lot of us believe we're going to be saved because we believe in Christ and the Father and all this other stuff. Jesus said, I am the door. Yes, he is. And he said, by me, you and I must enter in. Mm -hmm. By the name Jesus. Not the title, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But the name Jesus. Yes. That's the, that's the atoning name. That's the sacrificial name. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, for neither is there salvation in any other? But there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. Ephesians 4 and 30. Let me run. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Woo! Got ahead of myself. <laughs> no, I didn't, but because of Earlier scripture said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Hear what the Spirit said. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Now, mm -hmm. go back to the onset where I shared with you the epistles of Ephesians and all the epistles to the church are to the individuals who have already been born again. Mm -hmm. This is how you are declared members of the body, members of the church, because you have been born again into the body. Mm -hmm. So what he is telling the members of the church, what he is telling us is grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Now, take a few minutes, seconds to think, what is grief? What does what, what grief mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does grief mean? And you and I are warned not to grieve the Holy Ghost. We're warned not to grieve the Holy Ghost. Grief is to uh, grief is like distress. It's like distress. Oh, anguish. Anguish. Uh, it's even considered to prevail. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. He said, He told the body of Christ not to grieve it. Not to distress it, not to uh, anguish it. So, in other words, we are to we are to obey the Holy Ghost because this is what He has given us to comfort us. Yes, He has. And when the Holy Ghost, He said, we are not to grieve it. You're not to stress it. You're not to challenge it. You're not to rebel against it. You're not to disobey it. Thank you, Lord. He said, whereby, whereby indicating because of the Holy Ghost, you are sealed. So if you are disobeying, <laughs> what has sealed you <laughs> even even in the store they'll tell you don't purchase a product if the seal is broken right right <laughs> <laughs> even in the store they'll tell you don't 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 purchase right. if this if the seal if you lift that cap and they say that if that seal is broken don't use that what do you think gonna happen to us if we break the seal? Mm -hmm. Moving on. He said, whereby ye were sealed. We were sealed by the Holy Ghost. So if you and I are mm -hmm. distressing or detesting or disobeying or rebelling, 
against the Holy Ghost. We have broken our seal. And, you, and I know because the carnality of our minds and the pride of life, the Bible says that's all that's in this world. The lust, the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Yeah. And we have become so intelligent that we think not. We don't even believe that. But by the pride of life, we think we can break the seal and the Lord is still going to come get us. Mm. When even your carnal mind tells you not to use a product if the seal is broken. Mm. Moving on. Scripture tells you in a high crisis to us, sanctification. Sanctification is set apart unto God. Wake up, people. Right. He said, if we be ashamed to own him before me, yes. he'll be ashamed to own us before his father. Mm -hmm. You can't be ashamed to be saved once your friends and people come around. Mm -hmm. You still have to be sanctified and set apart unto God. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go. Colossians 1.14 In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. This is what, this is what redemption is all about. Redeeming us or delivering us, rescuing us from sin, error, and evil. You cannot hear the truth and disobey it and continue to live in error or evil Confess that you say hmm. the Lord is not taking confession. He's taking the key. He's taking the life that you live in obedience to his word. Yeah. First Timothy, second chapter, verse five and six. For there is one God. There is not a holy trinity. There is one God. And one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Yes, yes. We were redeemed. Our redemption is in Christ Jesus. It's not in our bank. It's not in the car we drive. No. Wake up, people. We must be baptized into Christ. Moving on. Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Not by the blood of goats and calves, by his own blood. Scripture says, almost all things by the law were purged by blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Mm -hmm. First Peter 1 and 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold. Wake up, people. You were not redeemed by money. No. Silver and gold. Wake up. No. Stop allowing these false teachers to get you amped up about covetousness. That's a sin. Mm -hmm. Coveting. Coveting. That's a sin. You are not, you and I were not redeemed by silver, corruptible thing by silver and gold. Matter of fact, the Bible says no man can serve two masters. Amen. You cannot serve mammon and God. Can't do it. You're gonna despise one, you're gonna hate one, and you have to let one go. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, he said, For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, Peter talking to Israel. Listen to statement. He said, for as much as you know. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said, in other words, <laughs> he said, you already know that's not how you need to do it. No. Come on, people, wake up. 
you already know how in the world do you allow false teachers or religion to trick you into not knowing what you know already. Right. Come on, you wasn't redeemed. You wasn't redeemed by that. Most of us, he said, most he said to most of us that he made uh, the poor, he made us rich and famous. Because mm -hmm. naturally we were poor. Right. Naturally Israel was poor. Uh, yes. And they still, anyway, let me go. <laughs> Revelations 5 and 9. Let me give you up. Revelations 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal. Therefore, I'm sorry, thereof, for thou was slain and had redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Said thou art worthy. He died for the African, the European, the Asian, the Latin. One. 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 Every kindred, every tongue, and people, and nation. Yeah. We have the same Savior. We have the same Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And he is trying to redeem us from sin and error, which is the big one, and the evil. Yes. So as it is always, we encourage you to uh, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. We must be sealed. We must be sealed with the Holy Spirit. We must. We're not going to make it to eternal life without the Holy Spirit. Not, it's not going to happen. We go, we are going, we are, everyone is going to resurrect to eternity. But everyone is not going to resurrect to eternal life. Without the seal of the Holy Ghost, you're going to resurrect to eternal damnation yeah. and torment. So we are not here. The Bible said, death and hell, hell which is the grave, is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Yes. That's the truth. Now you can, you can let them keep lying to you and tell you to go, go plant a seed and wait on your harvest if you want to. <laughs> they tell you to go plant a seed, send in your seed money, and then harvest time, you're going to get triple. You know? Keep falling for that. We pray that you got something from the Word of God. We look forward to uh, fellowship in which you win tonight at 6 o'clock. Let us pray to give you a about it. Be grateful to him, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning. Thank you once again for the visitation of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the words that we have heard. We ask that you would give us the strength, Lord God. That we will put that we will put our faith and trust in the power of your spirit, and we will not, Lord God, grieve the Holy Ghost, Amen. Lord God, that you have given unto us to seal us. We ask that you take us from this place, never from your presence. Assemble us together again at your point of time, and we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.